What would be the key elements or key key success factors for, uh, let's let me back that up a little bit. Why would you want to have a local or, or domestic startup in the market there? Well, what would make it more, uh, uh, has more chance of success success in having a domestic startup versus having one from like first uh, if we're bringing the perspective having startup here in the US so the US in general and especially on the west coast there's a huge um, uh, environment for or, and uh, for startups right yep. so you've got that culture which is huge in the West Coast and the East Coast, and now it's pretty much spreading you know, to almost every city in the U.S. Proven, well-proven model. A lot of successful startups came from here. Europe is picking up. Berlin, you got Paris. You know, you got these cities are coming up, right? And now, why would why would we, you know, why would you and I build this fictitious company and start up in the in in uh, in uh, the you know Middle East, the Gulf, you know, area? Well, what are the yeah? What are the components? What are the elements of success there? Why are we choosing it there? So east versus right. west. <laughs> it's a, well, it's not it's not like that, you know. But um, um, building a startup, you know, here in the Middle East, it's um, um, something rare. We've seen that even you know we have now let's say hundreds, let's say of small, small, very tiny micro startups and. You know, a couple, yeah. maybe 10, 15, you know, big names in, in the startup world. But um, we've all grown, uh, you know, grew in that environment of, uh, uh, you know, uh, of technology um, improving exponentially since the mm-hmm. 80s, since the 90s. We've all heard the Gates story, the Steve, Steve Jobs story, so on. And all other founders, you know, they've created something from nothing. And uh, uh, that's, and that's, you know, what inspired us, I think, here in the region, that we don't have, we don't have um, anything close, anything close to uh, a tech, you know, sector or a tech uh, uh, community. And uh, that, let's say, spins out these companies, these startups, these ideas, and um, it seems that we are being left behind. That's why, you know, you have uh, many of the pe- many people, you know, uh, that have either uh, came that have either come from uh, uh, you know, Arabs that have come from the U.S. or that have studied in Europe, studied abroad. You know, they see that there's nothing here, so maybe we can. There, there is an opportunity for us. And who wants? Who doesn't want to create a company from nothing? You know, well, the next, the next, uh, okay, let me, the next billion dollar company yeah. or the next not billion dollar, I, I get that million dollar company. Here yeah, that's that's always the, the the question is like, why are you doing this? Of course, number one or two would be profit and money, absolutely, and and being successful for sure. It's it's great to have an impact on 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 the global stage, you know, in our field, right? Especially us being technologists. But uh, so so yeah, it sounds like you're saying like a societal. Impact. Society. Yeah, societal impact, right? And uh, and you don't have uh, local competition, let's say. So you. Well, yeah. So so yeah, that would be one. The other question, and he's, this is a question. I don't. I'm not very very familiar with uh, the entire workforce and invi- You know, the infrastructure there. Would it be um, competitive edge in terms of labor force, in terms of uh, knowledge base? You have resources there that are unutilized and we can you know as a as a startup with the with working in a cutting edge environment would that be a competitive edge that you have the untapped market of resource that is not getting used now well it is but um, everyone's that that's graduating here is immediately you know the smart the top people are uh, are leaving and going to the US and Europe because there are opportunities there lots of opportunities uh, not present here because of the lack of yeah. either uh, come any between brackets is lack of high paying jobs here in the Middle East. So, um, um, it, more in the all in the Middle East, uh, it's more of uh, traditional, all the traditional businesses, traditional industries that are operating. 
uh, since tens and tens of years. I mean, uh, so um, so I think, or uh, I think I believe, we do have a small pool of talent. This small pool of talent graduates from college from local colleges. You know, the smart, the top people don't stay behind and start companies. They mm. immediately leave to the the states and uh, to Europe and uh, start businesses over there. You know, I have a I have a friend. Uh, he uh, uh, left, I think, in uh, before the Arab Spring. He left to uh, the UK, and yep. within uh, two or three years, he sold his company for a hundred million pounds. Hmm. So, <laughs> so it's it just took him two or three years in the UK to do that. In the Middle East, how long will it take? Will, will it take him? Maybe forever. Maybe never. Yeah. So, so, which is a good, you're bringing a very good point here. Um, success factor or, or reasons to, to be able uh, to pull your business together. Um, if I'm, if I'm yeah. going to highlight, if you highlight one thing, uh, go ahead. Let, let, let me, let me put, put this into, uh, let's say if, uh, every um, stakeholder, let's say in the startup process has a different reason. Governments, they want to create jobs because they want to tackle unemployment. They want to create, for example, here in the GCC, they want to to um, to grow the non-oil based uh, um, businesses, industries that are factoring in to the GDP. So they want to lessen their dependency on oil. Now, uh, investors, local investors or international investors see that maybe there's a growth market here in the US and Europe and Asia. It's becoming more and more saturated now. Maybe the Middle East is a right market to um, you know, get good deals, uh, get good deals and valuations. So, uh, uh, so it's basically, it's, money, it's uh, return on investment for these investors. For the founders, founders, you know, well, um, uh, they're uh, dreaming. They have mainly. You have two reasons. Number one, of course, is the money. You no, know, everyone they want they want to build something from nothing. Actually, it's just a knowledge-based business, and build it to something global and scalable. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other okay. thing, the other thing is um, any an impact on the society. I think. I think it's. Um, uh, it's um, it's something it's something that uh, all of us aspire to do. And everyone, you know, we want to see. We don't want to be the backdrop of the world. We want to see ourselves, you know, contributing something, being in the uh, 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 being innovative. Let's say uh, I've read two days ago uh, when Amir Hijazi he um, uh, published his book Ecosystem Arabia. I read it in like four or five hours. It's like six hundred page book. So, <laughs> so I, I wanted to go through it all before, uh, you know, starting uh, or talking about startups, just to understand uh, what his what his point of view and the point of view of I think hundred experts that he interviewed. In. Okay, okay, that's good. That's yeah. good insight. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so they divided, um, let's say, the business models for startups here in the region into three different um, types. Number one. Is the copy paste type, which is you know like uh, like Rocket Internet, like what Rocket Internet does with uh, you know something uh, it's a famous some business model that is successful in the U.S. Let's copy it to Europe. Let's copy it to Asia. Let's copy it to the Middle East. So this is the copy paste model. You can exactly. bring it over, yeah. Yeah, yeah like yeah. we have Uber. Now we let's do Karim. We have Amazon. Let's do Sur, and so on and so forth. So. Um, yeah. We do a yeah, bit of localization, yeah, make, customization yeah. based on, uh, for, for the region. And uh, we may have a viable business because there's, there's nothing in it. It's, a, it's an empty market. So if we, can, if we fill it with, with something, it may have, or with, with something that is successful in other markets, then there is a chance that it can be successful. Yeah, yeah. So this is the first step. The next, next one, is uh, the let's say the the local problem uh, model. So we find the local problem, and then 
we find a solution for it, and we build a business out of it. So this is something like, uh, for example, what what uh, we do at Nawat. Um, we we saw a local problem. A cus- one of our customers came to us and said, "You know, this I'm yeah. I'm facing this and this issue, and can you guys help us out? You know, solve it." So we did. We built software, we built hardware, and we turned this into a product that now we are selling in the market. So this is kind of the uh, local you know, uh, local problems that we are solving. Other, the other type uh, is the innovation type uh, startups. Yep. So innovation types meaning that I'm on the cutting edge of technology worldwide. I'm doing something that no one else in the something world. Something new, something new. Yeah, something yeah, you bring new. something new to the market that opens up new doors, new new avenues for business. Yeah. And in in that part of the book, he writes, okay, so there, uh, you know, this is the third type of businesses. And there are many examples, but he doesn't include any example in the book because there's no yeah. <laughs> there's no examples for for yeah. that for that type of business. Because yeah. let's say you want to be at the forefront of technology, so you want um, and you have you have you have two avenues for that. Um, or let's say three avenues. Either government has to be on the forefront of technology, so they've. Yeah. They're investing into you know the top research labs locally that are competing with uh, with those globally, or you have academia, which is uh, also uh, uh, you know at the forefront of technology, which is not present currently. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, and when when we were in college, remember that you know we used to take to uh, we we used to. Uh, um, uh, le- uh, learn about um, microprocessors in the 70s and you know we gradually went in 2000 yes, exactly exactly no, yeah. you bring up a good point it's a, it's a completely disconnect between you know there are elements of theory right if, which applies there's no time for for math for example it's uh, math is math but in, in applied sciences and, and engineering you really want to be tapping to the latest and greatest relevant to the to the to the market, right? To the industry market and the, to the job market. Yeah, that's true. Yep. The third part, which is the industry. So yeah. if we have industry that is working on the uh, forefront of technologies, then uh, we may have a chance, let's say, to build something. Let's say that um, you know we have uh, Karim, we have Am- we have Amazon, we have Souq, we have uh, I don't know several ma- many startups that are employing yeah. um, engineers, that are employing developers. The, uh, these guys, you know, they're uh, um, getting experience in building uh, technologies here locally. So once they move on to other companies, then we have, may have the talent pool that is necessary, you know, to build the next big thing. But um, we are still in, I believe, in the early, early stage of uh, of um, you know building innovative innovative uh, startups, and I think mm-hmm. it would probably take maybe decades to reach that. Why we need to? I, I, can I, I'm I'm sorry to say that we need to reinvent the circle again. Any why in in the U.S. for example you have NASA, okay NASA is on the forefront of uh, space exploration technology exploration, and yeah. so on, and yeah. at the same time they got disrupted for, from SpaceX. But I want to leave that to, to another to another <laughs> session. But I want <laughs> yeah. to include that, that here that, for example, why is there then a European Space Agency? Why are they doing the same thing from scratch? I mean, uh, India, China, Russia. Uh, it's, Russia, it's everywhere. Russian space program, the Chinese yep. space program, even now the UAE space program. So everyone, you have yep. to do, you, you have to localize these technologies and you have to capitalize, uh, you know, uh, on uh, the uh, the growth and uh, the uh, on, on the continuous improvement of, of these. Mm. So, um, because what what happens is that we woke up one day after I think thirty years of innovation, and now we want to build you know billion dollar uh, companies in all all areas and facets of uh, of technologies, but. You don't have that history behind it. I mean, you don't have yeah. the, the yeah. Bell, the let's say the the DARPA at the beginning. Then you don't have uh, Bell Labs. You don't have 
Intel, Fairchild, Semiconductor. You don't have the Microsoft. You don't have after that the Alphabet. You don't have so so there there's a continuous let's say trajectory of uh, uh, businesses and the technologies improving from year to year to year through uh, uh, throughout the whole throughout let's say the U.S. ecosystem that you don't have it mm -hmm. here. 